Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share our content. We want everybody to know what's going on. So you're a business owner. What could be wrong with that, right? You've got all these things that you have to do, brilliant ideas. You have a rock star website. You have classes you want to get. You have contracts that need to be done. And then somebody says, you need to start a blog. What do you do? Where do you start? And how do you not quit your business? Well, today we're going to introduce you to somebody who's going to help you with all of those things. Her name is Katie Kalmeyer, and she is, are you ready for this? A squirrel herder. That's right. Y'all, please say hello to Katie. Hi, Katie. Hey, Ricky. How are you? I am well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it, my friend. I'm glad to be here. So, Katie, you heard the intro. All the things that are part of the business the contracts, the websites, the content, the blogs, blah, blah, blah. And all the shiny things that happen in our head. And that's where you come in. So can you tell me a little about, about the squirrel herding thing, my friend? <laughs> sure thing. Uh, yeah, so everybody's driven down the road at some point and watch the squirrel jump into the road, stop, look around, dart back, stop, dart back again, back and forth, back and forth. And the the saying goes that, you know, the, the road is littered with squirrels who couldn't make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I've never heard that before. And it's so true. Poor thing. It is. It is. So, um, yeah, so it's all about hurting squirrels um, instead of chasing them around. Cause that, that's often what we do right in our business. We're chasing this shiny object. We're chasing that squirrel. We're chasing this. So instead of chasing them around, I help people to actually control them herd them where they want to go and then keep them useful as opposed to just running around. Um, I, yeah. I jokingly once said that I don't have ducks. I don't even have a row. I have squirrels and they're all drunk. <laughs> and somehow somebody said, Oh, so you're a squirrel herder and it stuck. It was a joke oh, and it gosh. hung on. And so here I am the happy squirrel herder. I love it. And so many of us as business owners can relate. Because there's so many things that that need to be done, should be done. Yeah, the should word. So mm -hmm. much stuff. So, Katie, what do you do to help those of us with chasing our squirrels around the yard? What do you do? <laughs> well, whenever I get to sit down with a, a, a very um, advantageous entrepreneur, I like to to help them with their adventure because, like you said, everybody's always chasing all the things, never knowing in which direction to go. And we sit down and we map out not necessarily how you want to get there, but where you want to be. And then we work our way backwards, breaking it down step-by-step, step, simplifying it. Do you have an email list? No. Well, then let's get one started. Do you have a calendar program? No. Then let's get you on one. Do you have a way that you can invite your fans to join their fan club? And so that you can then turn around and sell to them. And it's all about deciding where you want to end up, putting a date and time to it, and then making it happen in between. Oh my gosh, all of that is so good. Y'all may not know, but the name of her business is called Omni Media Designs. Designs. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was like production. Nope, it's Omni Media Designs. And Katie, what kind of things do you design besides sales funnels, besides calendars? Because you also have some courses as well on your website. What other things do you design for your clients? Uh, you're right. I do have a bunch of things. That's why it's Omni Media, because I do specialize in all the different types of media. So whether it's social, uh, Facebook or Instagram, any of the social media platforms, whether it's uh, you're, we're doing digital products for my clients, like you said, creating this, the sales funnels and things like that. I also help my clients with PDFs when they're going to do a lead magnet, or if they're going to do some type of something, like I said, to bring in their fans, that's what we work in. And I'm also helping a couple clients with, we're doing paper journals and paper notebooks. So when I say omnimedia, I do mean all the media types. We go everything from digital to physical products. Wow. How did you get into this, Katie? Because that is a whole bunch of stuff going on, my friend. It is. It. Uh, I actually fell into it. I When I was in the corporate world, I was an HR manager. 
And when my first child was born, I decided that I needed to stay home with my kids. Uh, several years later, my second child, we found out he has certain mental disabilities and I wanted a way to be able to stay home to take care of him and was really, I'm, I'm a tech geek and I'm really good at figuring out that tech stuff. I'm also very creative and it's an outlet for me to share what my creativity is and, and simplify the processes for other business owners on that tech side of it, because too often uh, a lot of my clients will come from the corporate world and not understand the processes of how the business actually runs on the back end. And I'm very good at simplifying that for them so yeah. that they can go from this amazing, passionate dream to actually creating a sustainable income. Oh man, that right there, the sustainable income, because mm -hmm. a lot of us that are business owners, we're super excited about the thing that we do and we love what we do and we're super great at what we do. We suck at the part <laughs> of sharing what we do with other people, getting the word out there and finding clients to enjoy the thing that we are good at doing. And that exactly. sounds like exactly what you do. Mm -hmm. Katie, who is it that you work with? Who do you work for? Who are your clients? Most of my clients are um, blossoming engineer or engineer, entrepreneur, sorry. And they, like I said, they've come from the corporate world and they want to start their own business. They just don't understand the back end. So it's mainly women. It's mainly those that have transitioned into the entrepreneurial world who need a little bit of help with the tools and systems to actually make their, their business grow and scale so mm -hmm. that they can create that sustainable income and continue to do what they love as opposed to creating the business and getting burnout. Cause a lot of us do, we work so hard mm -hmm. on that back end that we never get the opportunity to actually do the work we love and we quit too often. And so I'm okay. here to help you to stay in that passion zone and, mm -hmm. and help you to create the processes and systems so that your business runs smoothly and you can continue to help the people you want. That is so great. You talked earlier about, you know, fan clubs and getting people, your fans to come to your club. What do you mean by that? Who are, who's the fan club? So I'm a geek at heart and whether it's sci-fi or the fantasy or anything like that. And the biggest thing about that, that is the fan clubs. And they're the ones who fan girl or fan boy over their particular hero, whether it's a comic figure or something else. And I, I found early on that instead of calling it your audience, instead of calling it the your your customers and your clients, when I talk about your fan club, people gravitate that to that more because let's be honest, we're in business to sell, but how do you sell to somebody when you're calling them a customer and a client wow. and a and a and an audience? Mm -hmm. It kind of creates that disconnect. And when you call them a fan club, those are people who love you. They love what you wow. do for them. They love the products that you're creating for them or the courses or whatever it might be. And so why not look at them as your fan club? Wow. Because they are there cheering you on and you are there mm -hmm. to give them what they need and what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was really fun to call it a fan club. It makes you feel special. So it's all about changing the narrative, not changing what you do, just changing what you call it. Because I think there's there is huge credence in that. You know, because I used to hate my bills more than everything until I found out how much fun it is to just pay them off. And mm -hmm. so I changed the narrative and I start I stopped calling them bills and they were just opportunities because I'm very task oriented. And so if I see the big pile getting to the small pile, I get super excited. And mm -hmm. so that's kind of so I, I get that that that's kind of neat and so what do you do for the fan club like you had talked about your lead generation mm -hmm. you know what what do you do different than any other entrepreneurs doing to get those fans to your door the number one key element in any entrepreneur's business their passion whatever it might be the number one element is you mm -hmm. and you are what makes you different from every other business out there. There was, wow. uh, I read a story once where um, one of these marketing companies brought together a whole bunch of the CEOs and the CFOs of chicken places. And they, and I know it sounds weird. They had them in this one office building. They had them all sitting around the table, asking them all questions. And anybody who's driven down a road, driven down the freeway, there are 10 million different chicken joints. Oh yeah. And the, one of the, the people who was holding the interviews asked each person, what is it that makes you different 
from the company sitting next to you. And every single one of the people in attendance said, we do. They understood it wasn't about the recipe. It wasn't about the company. It wasn't about what it was that they portrayed. It wasn't how they marketed. It was who they were and how their clients and customers were attracted to them, to their policies, to their morals, to their standards, to whatever it was that they stood up for. Mm -hmm. So when you come back to that on a base level, you are what it is that makes your business unique. And even if you have employees, even if you have people that are working with you, it is still you that makes Mm -hmm. it unique. And focusing on you and what you can give your people, your fan club, is Mm -hmm. what it is that's going to grow your business. People are attracted to humans, Mm -hmm. not to a brand, not to a style, not to colors. They are attracted to the person behind it, what it is that you stand for, where they can connect with you. And I focus on that. So you just basically said, know what makes you unique and thereby create the fans around you. Absolutely. That is huge for a lot of business owners. Like you you mentioned all the things, the brand, the colors, the, even the product, you know, when you say you take, take all of that out and it is you, especially Mm -hmm. because small business or small businesses and, and startup entrepreneurs, you literally are your brand Mm -hmm. until you become McDonald's chase Audi, Mercedes, whomever, Mm -hmm. you are your brand. Mm -hmm. And when they see you, they are seeing all that you represent. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That that makes you rethink a whole bunch of things right there. I mean, and and that's really good. It's something you don't think about um, because a a lot of us have and have had business coaches. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I was having business coaches and some of the coaches I have now, they've changed because before it was about the colors and Mm -hmm. your font and your this, but now it is more about what do you bring to the table? What makes you different? How is it you can relate to your clients, which I think is phenomenal Mm -hmm. and full disclosure, y'all I'm a client of Katie. (laughs) Yeah. I wasn't going to say that, but I really am. And a lot of the things that she's doing for me is, and let me tell you, the girl ain't no punk. She's really good at what she does. And I am, I'm not saying this because she's on here. It's the truth. I'm having a new website that's coming up that she has designed. You'll see some things that will pop up on the screen that, that she has done for me. And I'm telling you, she knows her crap. I like it. Katie, one of the other things that I love about the you besides everything is that you are a cosplay fan, my friend. Excuse me. Yes, I am. Um, Tell me a little bit about your cosplay. Bless sorry, you. my cosplay. Um, yeah, so my son, like I said, has mental disabilities. But one of the things he loves doing, aside from the comics that I've introduced him to, is um, getting being being able to hide behind a mask. And so early on, uh, we were living in Hawaii. And uh, they had their very first Comic Con, which is a comic convention. And he was very hesitant about going out in public, all these people everywhere. And so we designed for him a costume where he got to hide completely. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Minecraft, but the character Steve, uh, everything is very boxy. And so we just pulled out a whole bunch of boxes. We painted them and put him on him. And so nobody knew it was him other than Mm. they knew us, but he was able to walk around in a sense of freedom. Wow. And he got to interact with people and do things like that. And so it, I, I, like I said, I've always been a geek. I've always been a comic fan. I've always loved the sci-fi stuff and being able to share those things with, with him and with my daughter Mm -hmm. and it just kind of stuck. And so since then, every chance we get, we're finding comic cons, we're finding fan fests, we're looking for any kind of anime fest, things like that, where we can put on a costume. We also design our own. So it's not that we go out and buy things. We actually create our own costumes and yeah, it's, it's, I know it sounds strange for a grown woman to be putting on costumes but again it's one of those things that this is uniquely me and yeah. this is one of those things that I just enjoy because it allows me to connect with my son on a level yeah that, that there's that like I said that connection that that we don't have outside of that and he is he has the ability to show up to these and just be himself 
yeah. because he's hiding behind that mask and people don't know it's him. And so, yeah, I'm, I cosplay. <laughs> I, I think that is so cool. I've always wanted to do cosplay, but them costumes ain't no joke. Mm -hmm. No, they're they, not. They, and, and I mean, and they are incredibly elaborate. I love the, what you said. You know, he feels like he can hide. Katie, you and I both know this. We're all hiding in one way or another. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so it's just with, cool. comics, with cosplay, you get to do it in front of everybody. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> I love that. So, Katie, if there were women out here who are starting to fledgling entrepreneurs, getting ready to leave their nine to five to do this thing full time and they need help. How would they contact you, my friend? So again, business is called Omnimedia Designs and you can reach me at Omnimedia Designs LLC at gmail.com or Omnimedia Designs.com. Or if you just want to follow on social media, you can find me everywhere as Katie Kalmeyer. I love it. You guys, there's so much here that Katie has to offer. And don't worry, if you didn't get her contact information, all of it is going to be in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share. Someone you know needs this information. So make sure they get it. Katie, my friend, before I let you go, we have to play a game. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yes. So this, came, this game is called This or That. Pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of a couple of things. And you, my friend, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I don't know. Nothing with you is just simple. Girl, step Girl. back to okay, like go ahead. Got this. <laughs> we Here we go, y'all. All right. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Prince or Michael Jackson? Ooh. Ooh, Michael Jackson. I don't know why I'm surprised by that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Romantic comedy or action adventure? Action adventure. Fight, flight, or freeze? Say that again? Fight, flight, uh -huh. or freeze? Oh, fight, definitely. Yeah, that I pretty much knew. Okay. Do it yourself or hire a professional? Do it yourself. Large crowds or small groups? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um. Nope, that's perfect. Nope. <laughs> that That's so you. That is so you. Tent or hotel? Oh, can I glamp? Camper? Can I do the in-between? I'm there with you. See, I don't camp since I got out of the military. I don't, I don't sleep on <laughs> nothing. That's not feathers or down or something bougie glamping. I can get with, so I'm okay with that. Okay. Slow dance or shake that thing. Shake that thing. Mm -hmm. I know. Slow dance. You have to have a partner. It's awkward. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> we're not judging here. We're not <laughs> judging. I was just saying, all right. Peanut butter, crunchy or smooth, smooth. Mm hmm. So do you bite your tongue or do you clap back? Really? Yeah. Really? It's not for me, Katie. It's for those who are watching. I clap back. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. snarky shows up. Yeah, snarky will show up. And finally, Katie, what would you tell your 13 year old self right now? Girl, don't ever quit. Just keep going. I love it. I love it so much. Katie, thank you so much for joining me, my friend. I appreciate you. Thank you. It's been fun. It always is whenever we get together. Isn't it? And don't worry, y'all. That's it for this time. But we'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents. Mm -hmm.